So now that our code is up on GitHub, we can deploy our application and we're gonna be using Heroku for this. They have a free tier and they will handle all of the server management stuff for you. You can even add new servers with the click of a button and scale your application up and down and it will handle all of that. Your databases, your dependencies, everything is pretty much taken care of for you. So they have a free tier, but you can also go and add some paid upgrades or anything else you might want. But go to sign up and create your account. And then there is a step that you can go into your settings and connect your GitHub account under um, account settings. And then you'll be able to go into the dashboard and create a new application. So we're gonna call ours scheduled tweets um, but it's probably gonna be taken. It's actually not, surprisingly. So we'll create our app and we are good to go. Now, the way to set this up is to go to the GitHub section here under deployment method. You can either push from your local machine or you can push from GitHub. So if you connect GitHub, you'll be able to select your repo name here. So scheduled tweets is the name of my repo. We'll search for that and we will click connect. So that's all we need to do for that. And this um, will show our automatic deploys here. So we can actually make it so that anytime we push up code to the main or master branch on GitHub, it will trigger Heroku to deploy that code, which is actually super handy in the real world, but we're going to do a manual deploy. Now, if we do a manual deploy, our code is going to be cloned and it's gonna start installing all of the dependencies. It's going to set up Ruby and Node.js for our assets, but things will tend to fail for the very first time. So for example, what we see right here is we get an error message and it says, um, your bundle supports only the platforms x86, 64, Darwin 20, but your local platform is x86, 64, Linux. So what it will do is try and tell you, hey, we're deploying to a Linux server, you're on a Mac, and Bundler didn't include um, any permissions to allow us to install these depend dependencies for Linux. So what we'll do is we'll go to our terminal, and we'll run that command in our terminal that will update our gemfile.lock and basically say, hey, it's safe to install this stuff on Linux. And we can also add Ruby as a platform in here um, for compatibility, I would go ahead and do that. And if we run git status, we will see that our gemfile.lock has changed. And it basically just added those two lines under platforms. So we'll go ahead in here and say git commit dash m, um, add Ruby and Linux platforms to gemfile.lock. We will git push that up and we can go back to Heroku and try to deploy again. So you might need to go through this step um, or this process a couple times until you get everything set up correctly. But what it will do is start installing all of our gem dependencies and then compile our assets, so all of our CSS and JavaScript. And then it will um, basically finish successfully, but we will need to actually run a command to run our database migrations because Heroku is not going to automatically run our database migrations for us. So we need to run that as an extra step. Now our second attempt at deploying failed because actually um, our database for Rails, the default database being SQLite is not production ready. So you can't use that on Heroku. SQLite is actually just a file that's on your computer as your database, but it doesn't allow multiple users to edit things at once like you need in a real production website. So Heroku doesn't allow SQLite. So we can go change our application by running Rails DB colon system colon change to PostgreSQL. What this will do is swap out our database configuration, our database.yaml, and it will install the Postgres gem for us into our gem file. So we can run bundle to install that. And you will need Postgres installed on your computer. So if you're on a Mac, you can do postgres.app. It's very easy to install and get running. Um, and it can help you basically manage your Postgres setup very easily. That's what I would recommend. And if you're on Linux, you can use app to install Postgres and the same thing on Windows. It's pretty easy to install Postgres. So you have to have that in order to install this Postgres gem. I've already got Postgres installed. And then we can run get status again and add these changes. So it adds 
the PG gem for Postgres removes SQLite and that is all. And it updates our database.yaml to change the database configuration to use that Postgres gem. So we'll commit these changes, switch to Postgres, and we will push that up. And we will now have a brand new database to use on our local machine and in production. Now let's start a deploy of this again. And this should now go through past that step. And if you're on your local machine, you're gonna need to run Rails DB create in order to create the Postgres database because we won't use the SQLite file anymore. And then you can run Rails DB migrate to create all of your database tables with your migrations. And we just need to redo that so that it runs in Postgres instead. So our deploy was successful and we can now access our app on Heroku. So we can click on any of these pages and it will take us around until we get to sign up and something goes wrong. Now if we go to more and click view logs on Heroku, we'll see that there is an error here. And it says undefined table relation users does not exist. It's basically saying your users database table it's not there, which means we need to run our database migrations. Now, the easiest way to do that is to run a command in the console on the web. And we can say Rails DB migrate and click run. And that is going to basically go connect to our uh, application and run that command for us all on the web, which is pretty cool. So our command is finished and it's created our users, our Twitter accounts, and our tweets tables. So we should be good to go. So if we refresh this now, we are able to sign up. So we can say our email and whatever we want our password to be. And I finished registering off screen, but my account was created successfully and saved in the Heroku Postgres database for our application. Now, I also wanna mention you can install the Heroku CLI. You can take a look at their installation docs for how to do that. But it will give you the Heroku command in your console or in your terminal and you can run Heroku get remote-a scheduled tweets or whatever your app name is. And this will actually add a Git remote called Heroku that allows you to deploy directly from your own computer. So you can say git push Heroku master, and that will go and push all of your new commits directly to Heroku, which will trigger a deploy and have the new version of your app released. Now I have already um, done all of that, the latest commits, so we can't push any new deployments because we don't have any new commits to push up. So that is um, another way for you to also run Heroku run Rails DB migrate from here. We don't have any migrations, but it will run this command on there and see if there are any migrations needing to be run. And you can see we didn't have any, so it just finished that command, but we can also run the Rails console from here and actually take a look at our production Rails app, our database and everything from there. You have to be very careful not to delete anything important because this is your production database if you run Heroku run Rails console. So that does allow us to grab for example, user.last, and we can see, hey, we do have a user in our database. Now there's a couple things we still have to set up. We need an add-on for Redis. So we're gonna look for Redis in the add-on section. Oops, we want Redis, Heroku Redis. We wanna grab the free tier, and we will submit the order form. That will install the Redis database for our application, and that will allow Redis and our Rails app to communicate with each other. Now, the other thing we need to look at is these dynos. We have one for our web, which is going to run our Rails server by default. Heroku is smart enough to know we want to run bin Rails server and tell it the specific port and the Rails environment, which is production. And that is good for now, but we also want to add our Sidekick instance in here. So what we can do is we can open up VS Code again, and we wanna create a file called our proc file. Now this one already got the Heroku icon here, so it knows, but basically we can define our different processes here, and we can say we have a web process, a worker process, this is going to run Sidekick. And if we save this and we add this to Git, when we push this up to uh, Heroku, it's actually going to set up those processes 
in our dinos section. So we'll add another line in here for the worker, but we can also run a release as well. Release is going to be bin rails db migrate. And what this will do is after the code has been deployed, if everything was successful, it will run rails db migrate and it will update our database before restarting our application. So we can use this to automatically uh, run our migrations on deployments. So we can run get status again. We will add our proc file and we can add, let's check out the DB schema changes here. Um, it changed from an integer to a big int because we're on Postgres and it also added this extension here. So we can save those changes um, for our migration. So we'll say uh, update schema and add proc file. And we can push this to GitHub, but we can also from here trigger our deployment to Heroku by saying git push Heroku master. So this will look very similar to GitHub, except it will now begin our deployment as part of this push process. So our new deploy completed successfully and we can hop back into the Heroku dashboard and we'll see under the dynos now we have a worker for Sidekick. And noticeably our release one is not there because that release one is special for the release process and it's not one that actually runs all of the time. The dynos listed here are for processes that should always be running. And we always want the Rails server and our Sidekick process running. So we have to click edit to turn this on, but we can do that and it will run as a free dyno and we are good to go. So now we can actually schedule tweets in production um, using Sidekick and have that work. But we have one more change to make. We need to add an environment variable to our app in Heroku, which is our Rails master key. And this is our production master key. So if you remember, we previously created config credentials, development.yaml.encrypted and development.key. Those were for our development environment only. We would put our test keys and things like that in there. But we also need one of these for production. So let's go ahead and create that now. Now, if you don't remember, we can run Rails credentials colon edit dash dash environment equals development to open up our development keys. And actually we're gonna use the same Twitter API or Twitter OAuth keys in both development and production. So you can go and edit this, copy your Twitter keys and paste them into your production file, which will open with environment uh, equals production. So this will create a file. We will have our Twitter um, API key and API secret, if I remember right. And we will just paste our Twitter keys inside of here with the correct name. So once you save that file, it will spit out the key. You can also open up this file and read out the key from inside of it, but it will tell you that if it creates it for the first time. And we can go into Heroku, add that as a Rails master key for production, and we're good to go. Now if we run git status, we'll see that two files were changed. I'm gonna add dash p. Basically it's saying, hey, make sure that the production.key file is never added to git. Um, by adding that to your git ignore, and then we can add git config credentials production.yaml.encrypted and um, write a commit, say add production credentials, and we can git push and git push Heroku master to do one last deploy. Now, once this deploy is done, we will have the production encrypted YAML file on Heroku. It will also have the Rails master key so it can decrypt it and we can verify in our Rails console on production to make sure we can access those keys and then we can test connecting our, um, our Twitter account to our production version of the site. So our deploy is completed and we can clear this out and run Heroku run Rails console to open up the Rails console. You can also do this online, remember. And when we're inside of the console, let's go and run our Rails application credentials file uh, or command to see if we can grab the Twitter API key from that credentials file that's encrypted. And if we can get that value back, like our Twitter API key, so this is what we use in our OmniAuth initializer. If we run this and we get our um, API key back, then we are good to go. Now this, I'm not going to print out the secret 
of course, because I don't wanna share that with, with everybody. But this is all we need to do to make sure that that is all working and we're good to go. So now that we know that that's working, we need to hop back into the Twitter apps portal and go to our application and then edit the callback URL to make sure that it matches our Heroku app here. So if I go in there, I can change the callback URL and I had one called GoRail Scheduled Tweets, but the app name is now scheduledtweets.herokuapp.com. We can have this listed in our callback URLs. So now let's save that and we're good to go there. So now let's test it out for real. We can connect a Twitter account. So we'll redirect us to Twitter. I've already signed up and approved this previously. So it automatically logs me in and connects our Twitter account when it redirects back to our app. So now we can go to tweets, schedule a tweet. This will be tomorrow by default. So if we go to today and we turn this to a minute from now, we can say hello world from production. And as long as we schedule this before the minute changes over, what we'll see is that once that time comes up, um, we can refresh our page here and we will see that this will change from scheduled for a time to actually show that view tweet because we've actually posted it. And then you can also look in your Heroku logs to see when it makes that post request. You will see a message come up here for the worker process and it will have made that Twitter account and it will fire that off automatically for you. So our time has happened. It is now going to run that worker. You can see that it posted that to Twitter. We can refresh here. It says view tweet now and we can see that tweet on our Twitter account. So everything is working, yay! So now it's working in production, which is awesome. This is super exciting. And we have one last thing that I wanna fix. And I'm sure that you'll find other little things that you like to improve and change and make work better. But there's one bug that I wanna fix in the next video.